actually, may mga ibang nagsasabi na merong mangilang-ilang mga tao hindi tumatanda. When you compare their bodies, young adulthood and middle adulthood, parang hindi nagbabago, no? Uh, totoo naman yon. There are certain people na mukhang hindi talaga tumatanda between young adulthood and middle adulthood, but they are exceptional. Exception to the rule sila. Oo. And there are many factors that can explain this. Number one, After you spend your time doon sa young adulthood years from age 20 to around your age 30s, now you enter middle adulthood. Usually, yung middle adulthood na yan, uh, nagsisimula yan at age 40. Kaya nga, di ba, meron tayong cultural na kasabihan, life begins at 40. So, there is a life that exists from 40 to a certain point in life, around age 59. Yung 40 to 59 na yun, yun yung tinatawag nating middle adulthood. So, merong isang unique na stage, different from young adulthood, different from any other stages, na dapat nating pag-aralan bilang mga psychologists. No? So, again, this is what we call the middle adulthood stage. Usually, uh, ang age dyan is from age 40 to 64, and the first people na may isip mo who are in that stage is none other than your parents, especially if nasa young adulthood ka na. So, karamihan ng mga kakilala ko na nasa young adulthood na, around 25, 26, 27, and up, yung mga magulang nila most probably fall within the age range of 40 to 64. So, merong mga unique psychological attributes na pinapakita sa atin, yung mga parents natin, na dapat tayong maging familiar with if we want to understand what they are going through during the middle adulthood stage. Simula natin sa physical developments. Ano ba yung mga nangyayari sa isang tao who is within the middle adulthood stage? Unang-una, physical deterioration begins. Nararamdaman na nila yung kanilang pagtanda. So, nagiging obvious na na yung kanilang physical functioning is no longer the same compared to nung nasayang adulthood pa lang sila. Meron na silang mga bagay na nararamdaman na nagsisignify, na, na nagsasabi na tumatanda na yung katawan nila. Lumalabo na yung mata, bumabagal yung metabolism, that is why they gain weight, especially fats, no? O, tumataba yung tao, uh, nagiging less flexible sila, and this is very frustrating, lalo na sa mga athletes. Dahil hindi na sila ganun ka-flexible, yung muscles nila hindi na ganun ka-powerful, a lot of these athletes are now thinking of retirement. Nagkakaroon na rin ng wrinkles sa muka, especially frustrating naman ito sa mga tao na nagtatrabaho in the aesthetic industry. Yung importante na mukha kang bata, especially for example kung artista ka or kung model ka. So, this begin to bother you. And of course, dumadami na rin yung o unti-unti na rin nadadagdagan yung ating mga puting buhok dahil yan sa melanin production. Hindi na masyadong nagpo-produce yung ating scalp ng melanin, kaya ang epekto nun kapag mababa ang melanin levels, dumadami yung puting buhok. And as we know, in our culture, kapag nakakita, kikita ang ibang tao ng puting buhok, ba? They associate that with aging. And true enough, marami mga middle agers during this time, kapag pumuputi na yung buhok nila, they are now coming to the conclusion that they are now really aging. So, kung ikukumpara mo yung katawan ng tao, young adulthood versus middle adulthood, talagang kitang-kita, litaw na litaw yung difference. So, this one is a picture by George Clooney, this one by Tom Cruise, this one by our very own, si Bossing Vic Soto, ibang-iba yung itsura niya, no? Oo. We have Rosanna Roses, and of course, Don Zolueta. Actually, may mga ibang nagsasabi na merong mangilang-ilang mga tao hindi tumatanda. When you compare their bodies, young adulthood and middle adulthood, parang hindi nagbabago, no? Uh, totoo naman yon. There are certain people na mukhang hindi talaga tumatanda between young adulthood and middle adulthood, but they are exceptional. 
exception to the rule sila. Oo. And there are many factors that can explain this. Number one, pwedeng genetics. Sadyang mabagal ang pagtanda ng katawan ng ibang tao. May mga ganun, no? yung mabagal silang tumanda. Kaya minsan may, may mga makikita ka, 60 na pero mukhang 40 lang. You know, or 65 na pero mukhang 50 lang because again, that is in their bodies. Their bodies age very slowly. And of course, wag rin natin tatanggalin yung lifestyle. Di ba? Malaki ang contribution ng lifestyle whether or not the body will age fast or will age slow. To make the long story short, kung gusto mo talagang mabagal o pabagalin yung pagtanda ng katawan mo, according to many studies, ang critical factor dito is stress management. Mas mababa ang level ng stress mo, mas magaling kang magmanage ng stress, mas mabagal ang pagtanda ng katawan. So, if you would like to look younger than your age, kinakailangan talaga one life skill that you need to develop is to how to manage your stress very well. Okay? So, yan na nga yung sinasabi ng slide na to. No? Napaka-importante niyan For a healthy midlife, ibababain mo yung stress mo because your level of stress will greatly affect a lot of physical events in your body, lalong-lalo na po yung, yung immune system natin. Kapag ang tao laging stress, bumababa ang immune system. And during this time, kapag nasa midlife ka na, ano ba yung mga sources ng stress dyan? Well, according to studies, top 3. Career. Oo, kasi karamihan ng mga midlifers, uh, matataas ang mga pwesto niyan sa mga companies because of their tenure, no? Pero at the same time, dahil mataas ang posisyon nila, they have many problems to encounter or to deal with. Number two, parenting din. It is during this time na yung mga anak nila nagsisilakihan and therefore, yung mga problema na dinadala ng mga anak nila, eh, mas nagiging challenging na nakakadagdag sa stress nila. And of course, later on we will talk about this, uh, most midlifers are also in the position where they need to take care of their aging parents. So, ang nangyayari dyan, parang nahahati tuloy yung resources nila between their own family and taking care of their aging parents. So, nakaka-stress yan. Kapag yung resources mo, hinahati mo sa dalawang grupo ng mga tao who are very important to you. But, the good news here is, there is a way for us to lower down the stress na mararamdaman during midlife years. At ito yung mga sumusunod na pwede mong gawin. Exercise, syempre, kumain ng tama, uh, positive uh, attitude towards life. Dapat maganda yung pananaw mo sa buhay, positibo. Hindi mawawala yung social support mo. So, friends, family members are also very important na sinusuportohan ka emotionally dito during this time. And of course, ito ah, marami ng mga studies na nagpapakita that spirituality or your relationship with God is very important in managing your stress. Actually, I remember this um, Bible verse na sinasabi na kapag ang tao nagiging okay siya sa Diyos, no? uh, nare-replenish yung kanyang physical strength. Like for example, in Isaiah 40.31, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, they will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary, they will walk and not be faint. And this is consistent to the many studies na nagpapakita that your spirituality, your closeness with God, meron siyang positive physical benefits. Mas hindi ka nagkakasakit, mas matagal kang mapagod, mas nagagawa mo yung mga bagay na dapat mong gawin because your spirituality gives you renewed strength. So this is another evidence na yung sinasabi sa Bible is very much consistent with what psychologists are discovering in the field of psychology. And also, wag natin kalilimutan, isa pang issue, issue na physical when it comes to midlife is sexual activity. Generally, for the married individuals, ang sexual activity ay bumababa. And this is very understandable. Ito yung mga factors bakit nababawasan yung sexual activity. Number one, time. Because again, mas marami ng responsibilities yung mga mid-agers or midlifers. Number two, energy. 
Okay? At the end of the day, they no longer have enough physical energy to do sexual activities. And of course, may kinalaman din talaga yan sa aging ng pangangatawan, especially for males. Yung mga lalaki, yung kanilang uh, physiological functioning, sexual physiological functioning, medyo bumababa na, such as maintaining erection, or getting erection in the first place, or even yung stamina nila while having sex. Kung baga, mas mabilis na silang mapagod during these activities. That's why, uh, yung mga lalaki na talagang gustong, gusto pa rin mabigay yung sexual needs ng kanilang mga partners, eh, pumupunta sila sa mga supplements, you know, na nagpapalakas daw ng sexual performance ng mga lalaki. Now, what we don't know is if this is, if these things really work or ito ay placebo lamang. Ibig sabihin ng placebo yung ina-expect mo kasi na mag-work, kaya siya nag-work. No? So, halos wala pa ako nakikita ang mga studies that directly explores on the effectiveness of these supplements. Pero, sabi nga nila, wala namang masama kung susubukan. After all, itong mga ito naman is FDA approved, di ba? So, hindi naman siguro i-approve yan kung merong masamang epekto, no? So, wala namang masama kung susubukan. For the girls naman, for women, isang issue sa midlife menopause. Basically, ang nangyayari sa menopause, the ovaries are no longer releasing egg cells. Remember, monthly ovaries of the girls, of, uh, of women, release at least one egg a month. Kaya doon nanggagaling yung kanyang menstrual cycle. But during this time, wala nang egg na nare-release every month. And so as a result, bumababa yung levels of estrogen. At yung pagbaba ng estrogen level, meron yung mga physical effects. Hot flashes, kaya karamihan ng mga nagbe-menopause, laging mainit yung pakiramdam nila sa katawan nila. Vaginal dryness or lack of vaginal lubrication, which ang epekto nito is... Again, sa kanilang sexual activity, kaya karamihan sa kanila, they, they find it a painful experience to have sex during this time. And of course, mood swings. O, o maraming mga women na nagbe-menopause, they experience range of extreme moods. no Minsan masaya sila, minsan malungkot sila, or biglang mabilis silang magalit. These are all the effects of low estrogen levels. Meron yung mga physical as well as mood effects sa isang babae na nagme-menopause. Pero alam nyo, this is very interesting. Sabi ng mga pag-aaral, uh, karamihan daw sa mga simptomas ng menopause are just needs. Ibig sabihin, mga gawa-gawa lamang. ba? Diba? Kasi, lagi natin ine-equate na ang babae, kapag nagme-menopause, they become irritable, they become anxious, nervous, they suffer depression, nagiging ma malilimutin, or worse, yung iba raw, eh, medyo nasisiraan daw ng bait tuwing nagme-menopause. Actually, modern studies have shown that a lot of these expectations are not true. Most women who are experiencing menopause don't experience the majority of these symptoms. No? Don't get me wrong, hindi natin sinasabi na walang epekto ang menopause kasi meron talaga. Pero hindi kasing tindi ng pinaniniwalaan ng kultura about menopause. In fact, nagiging counterproductive yan no? when you expect these things to happen to you. Let's say nagme-menopause ka. Tapos you expect these things to happen, ang nangyayari, eh nangyayari nga. Kasi nga ini-expect mo na mangyayari. Alright? So, one thing that you have to remember is a lot of these reports about menopause are just exaggerations. O, ibig sabihin na exaggerations yung, yung OA. Hindi naman talaga ganung katindi yung epekto ng menopause. Pero, Meron pa ring epekto. No? So, one lesson we can learn here is don't expect the worst because if you expect the worst, the worst is going to happen when you undergo menopause. During this time, lalong-lalo na sa mga women, meron na silang mga interventions na kinakailangan gawin. No? Ibig sabihin, walang excuse. Dapat gawin nila ito. Dapat na silang magpamamogram. Mag mamogram is a process where a professional examines the breasts 
of women. Importante na yan kapag ang babae ay pumatak na sa age 40. Lalong-lalo na kapag meron siyang lahi or history sa mga kamag-anak niya ng mayroong breast cancer. Oh, that's one of the reasons why women should undergo mammogram para ma-early detect kung ano man yung bukol na nagsisimula doon sa breast. Alright? And of course, pap smear. Ang pap smear naman, ang ina-examine dyan, is the reproductive organ of the woman. So, these two interventions are a necessity. Ibig sabihin, hindi ito option. Kinakailangan talaga magpacheck ng mga babae, especially kapag narating na nila yung age 40. For the guys naman, ang counterpart nyan is the prostate check. O, kinakailangan ang mga guys, at least once a year, nagpupunta sila sa mga doctors para ipacheck yung yung quality ng kanilang prostate. Kasi isa sa mga sakit na lumalabas during midlife is prostate cancer. No? Nagkakabukol yung prostate and one way to deal with that is again early detection. And the only way to detect prostate cancer or yung mga bukol-bukol sa prostate is kapag pinapacheck mo sa isang professional. Okay? So, bottom line, kapag ikaw ay nasa mid life na, mas dapat ano ka na, no? mas madalas ka nang nagpapacheck ng katawan mo because as we already discussed, physical deterioration are already beginning during this period. Okay? Now, let's go to the cognitive changes na nangyayari during mid Midlife. Ano ba yung mga pag, pagbabago na nangyayari in the way people think during this period? Dito na na-achieve ng tao yung expertise. Ibig sabihin, karamihan ng mga tao dito, they have already mastered their craft. Dito na nila na-achieve yung highest level of skill na ginagawa nila. Kung baga, dito sila pinaka nagiging magaling. You know, dito sila expectedly nagiging experts in their field of field where they are working at. So, dito na sila nagiging expert doctor, nagiging expert driver, nagiging expert banker during midlife. Kaya nga, di ba, sabi ko kanina, uh, karamihan ng mga tao dito in midlife, eh, mataas na ang posisyon sa kumpanya. Oo, bakit mataas na ang posisyon sa kumpanya? Kasi na-promote na siya ng na-promote. Eh, bakit siya na-promote ng na-promote? Kasi nga, through the years, na-develop nila yung skill na, na very important doon sa kanilang uh, line of work. Kaya karamihan sa kanila na ilalagay na sa mataas na pwesto because across the years, na-develop na nila yung kanilang expertise. Alright? Pero, during this time, eh, meron din silang kinakaharap na compensation. Ibig sabihin naman ng compensation, merong mga nawawala sa kanila, mga physical na hindi na nila nagagawa. And so, a lot of mid-agers nagko-compensate sila, bumabawi sila sa ibang paraan. So, they deal with their physical limitation with their applied knowledge. Dinadaan na lang nila sa technique. Okay, para mas malinaw halimbawa yung paglalaro ng basketball, di ba? During young adulthood years, the body is still very strong. It is still very fast. Mataas pa ang talon mo dyan. Di ba? Pero habang tumatanda, habang umiedad, ang katawan mo, bumabagal yan, yung muscles mo humihina, dumadalas ang injury, you are no longer playing as how you played before nung nasayang adulthood ka pa lang. And so, ang nangyayari, para makabawi ka sa iyong mga physical limitations, dadaanin mo na lang sa techniques. At alam nyo, ramdam na ramdam nyo ito, for example, yung mga naglalaro ng basketball, when you play with people who are in mid-life period, no? marami na silang mga techniques na alam. Sa Tagalog, nagiging magulang na sila. No? Hindi, naman sila hindi naman sila daya, pero these are parang aggressive techniques na ginagamit nila para makakompensate sila doon sa kanilang physical limitations. Diba? Yung meron na, gumagamit sila ng mga konting siko, you know? nangiipit na sila ng mga, nangahawak na sila ng mga jersey, oo, para hindi makatakas yung binabantayan nila. Okay? So, dyan sila bumabawi sa techniques. Okay? So, even outside sports, ginagawa rin yung compensation na yan. Like, for example, yung may mga kakilala kong mga surgeons. ba? During their young adulthood years, ang dami-dami nilang inooperahan. Pero, 
dahil yung kamay nila, yung kanilang dexterity of their fingers, medyo nababawasan, eh, ang, ang ginagawa nila, ina-adjust naman nila yung number of operations that they do. Binabawasan na nila. So, dati-dati, nag o sila siguro ng uh, tatlo, oh sorry, lima, limang pasyente per day. Ngayon, dahil midlife na sila, uh, may na minus na lang nila yan sa dalawa na lang. Oo. Tapos, yung nawawalang pag o na tatlo, binabawi na lang nila yon for example, sa consultation. So, less operation, more consultation. Dati-dati, more operation, less consultation. Or, kung medyo malakas-lakas, more operation, more consultation. Pero again, habang ikaw ay nagmi-midlife na, dapat magko-compensate ka doon sa mga skills na nawawala sa iyo dala ng pagtanda. During this time, karamihan ng mga midlifers, uh, nagkakaroon na sila ng integrative thinking. Okay? Ibig sabihin nito, they now have the ability to relate new information to their past experience. Nagkakaroon na sila ng mga bagong diskarte, nagkakaroon na sila ng mga uh, wisdom sa buhay, bunga ng mga past experiences na naranasan na nila. They have the ability to integrate their past experiences and come up with a new knowledge in the present. Okay? Ibang-iba ito, ang integrative thinking, bihira mo yan ma-explore or ma makita, I mean, sa adolescents and young adulthood. Why? Because there are not a lot of experience yet during adolescence and young adulthood. ba? Diba? Konti pa lang yung experience. But when you reach midlife, nag accumulate na yung mga experiences and those experiences uh, enables a person na i-combine-combine niya yung mga natututunan niya from those experiences to come up with a new knowledge. Okay? There was an experiment done na pinag-aralan nila yung integrative thinking. So, kinumpara nila yung thinking ng mga young adults at saka ng mga midlifers. In a laboratory, Uh, pinabasa sa kanila itong tale na ito. A stream was unable to cross a desert until a voice told it to let the wind carry it. The stream was dubious but finally agreed and was blown across. The thing is, itong tale na ito, if you notice, it's very abstract. ba? Diba? I mean, malabo. No? Bo malabs. Hindi mo maintindihan kung ano ba yung ibig sabihin yan. And true enough, in this study, the researchers pinainterpret sa mga young adults pinainterpret din sa mga midlifers. At tinignan nila yung pagkakaiba ng interpretations ng mga young adults at mga midlifers. And you know, according to the results, karamihan ng mga young adults, gulong-gulo doon sa tale. A lot of them had no idea what this tale is all about. Hindi nila, hindi sila makakam up with an accurate interpretation of the tale. Pero yung mga middle-agers, meron silang mga nasasabi, meron silang mga interpretation of the tale. Let me give you one example. Sabi ng isang middle-ager, I believe what this story was trying to say was that there are times when everyone needs help and must sometimes make changes to reach their goals. Some people may resist change for a long time until they realize that certain things are beyond their control and they need assistance. When this is finally achieved and they can accept help and trust from someone, they can master things even as large as the desert. Grabe, no? So, saan nang gaaling yung ganyang interpretation ng mga midlifers? Again, from the many experiences that they had in the past. Kaya hirap ni hirap yung mga young adults na interpret yan kasi hindi pa ganun karami yung experience nila na makakatulong sana sa kanila to interpret this abstract tale. Oo, pero yung mga middle-agers, sa dami ng na-experience nila, they can easily go back to those past experiences and then combine the lessons of that of those experiences and then interpret the tale. Kaya naman, during this time, may kinalaman din ito sa pag-pick ng creativity. Kaya karamihan daw ng mga mid-lifers, 
okay, during this time, tumataas yung kanilang level of creativity. They have the ability to create something out of the box. Kasi nga, bumabalik sila doon sa kanilang mga past experiences, kinukuha nila yung mga lessons na natutunan nila, and kinukombine, combine nila yon again, that's integrative thinking, and that enables them to create something na bago. Diba? Yun yung tinatawag nating creativity. Sabi nga, no, sa karamihan daw ng mga masterpieces ng mga scientist, lumalabas yan or naiisip nila yan during their midlife years. One example is Louis Pasteur. Diba? Si Louis Pasteur yung nag-isip na pwedeng merong mundo na kung saan nandoon merong mga microorganisms. 'Di ba? Siya yung naka-discover na meron palang mundo na may mga microorganisms. Paano niya o kailan niya naisip yung yung possibility na yon when he was in his 40s? Si Charles Darwin, yung kanyang theory of evolution. Kailan ba niya talaga naisip yung theory of evolution? Kailan niya talaga dinevelop yung theory of evolution para maging libro? At around age 50. And of course, wag natin kalilimutan yung mga psych majors dyan, si Sigmund Freud. Kailan ba niya naisip na yung pag-iisip ng tao has three levels? Conscious, subconscious, and the unconscious, leading to his psychodynamic theory. ba? Diba? Merong defense mechanism, may Oedipus complex. Kailan niya naisip yan when he was at his 40s? So, karamihan talaga ng mga creativity juices ng mga tao lumalabas yan during midlife. And what's the origin of that creativity? Again, integrative thinking. Yung mga past experiences na nararanasan or naranasan na ng mga midlifers. Alright? Sabi nga ng Bible, no? the Bible confirms this connection between past experience and creativity. Is not wisdom found among the aged. Does not long life bring understanding? Standing. So, totoo yan, no? nakakatalino talaga ang pagtanda. Pero it's not the age that makes you smarter, it's the experiences that you have within within that time that makes you smart. Okay? So, hindi yung edad yung nagpapatalino sa'yo, pero yung mga karanasan na nagkaroon ka habang ikaw ay umiidad. Nagbibigay sa'yo yan ng creativity. Now, let's talk about social-emotional development during uh, midlife. Siyempre, nandyan yung parenting, parenting issue. ba? Diba? Yung relationship mo sa anak mo. Okay? During this time, siyempre, uh, ang mga midlifers constantly in contact yan sa kanilang mga anak. And when we talk about parenting, hindi dapat natin kalilimutan yung parenting styles. Meron daw kasi apat na klase kung paano ba mag-parent ng anak. Authoritative parenting, authoritarian, permissive, or rejecting, neglecting. So, paano mo malalaman kung nasaan ka dyan sa apat na yan? Basically, uh, ano lang yan, no? ipukumpara mo yung level of warmth mo sa level of discipline mo. Okay? So, yun yung dalawang import, importanting elements in parenting, warmth and discipline. Kapag authoritative, ibig sabihin lang yan, eh, balance yung warmth mo at yung discipline. Okay? So, malambing ka, affectionate ka sa anak mo, pero dinidisiplina mo rin siya. Authoritarian naman, ang mataas lang sa yung disiplina. Lagi mo siyang dinidisiplina, pero hindi mo siya nilalambing. Hindi ka nagpapakita ng affection sa bata. Authoritarian yon. Permissive naman, eh, Um, mataas ang iyong warmth o yung affection mo, pero hindi mo siya masyadong dinidisiplina. Kaya karamihan ng mga spoiled brats, o oh, dyan nang gagaling sa permissive parenting. No? Although hindi naman lahat ng permissive parenting, nagiging spoiled brats yung mga anak, pero malaking predictor yan na kapag yung anak mo nag-permissive parenting ka, eh baka maging ganun. And of course, rejecting and neglecting, ibig sabihin parehong mababa. Hindi mo siya dinidisiplina, hindi ka rin affectionate sa anak mo. Now, let's talk about Research. According to research, alin daw sa apat ang pinaka-effective in developing positive children? Yung mga anak na hindi sakit sa ulo. According to research, it's authoritative parenting. Marami ng mga pag-aaral na nagpapakita talaga na uh, maganda ang nagiging epekto sa mga bata when they are brought up using the authoritative parenting style. This is one example of a journal article that shows that. Specifically, sinasabi ng journal article, yung mga bata daw na lumaki sa authoritative parenting, when you compare them 
when you compare these kids to kids na pinalaki doon sa tatlong iba pang parenting style, authoritative parenting leads to psychosocial maturity and academic success. So, yung mga teenagers na laking authoritative parenting, eh, mas mature sila mag-isip at the same time, mas nagiging magaling sila sa kanilang mga eskwelahan. And do you know na ang Bible, sinusuportahan din ng authoritative parenting, it is again in line with what research is saying. Proverbs 13.24 He who spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is careful to discipline him. Nasa ng authoritative parenting dito? If you study the passage, you can see both warmth and discipline. Diba? Nasaan yung warmth dyan? Yung love. Mahalin mo yung anak mo. And when you say love, you show affection to the person. Diba? Pero anong sinasabi ng Proverbs dito? Although you love your child, dapat dinidisiplina mo pa rin siya. Diba? Merong salitang discipline dyan. Pero yung level ng discipline mo is careful. So, love mo yung bata at the same time dinidisiplina mo siya, that's authoritative parenting. So, even the Bible agrees that authoritative parenting is a good parenting strategy to use sa pagpapalaki ng mga anak. Now, during this time, yung mga midlifers, some of them experience midlife crisis. Gusto kong i-emphasize yung salitang some o yung iba, di ba? Some, S-O-M-E. Ibig sabihin ko dito, hindi naman lahat ng midlifers automatic magkakaroon ng midlife crisis. Hindi ito nangyayari sa lahat. Okay? Hindi ito nangyayari sa lahat. So, pwedeng may ibang midlifers nagmi-midlife crisis, may mga ibang midlifers hindi naman sila nagmi-midlife crisis, no? So, uh, importante ito kasi ano eh, no? Huwag niyong i-expect na kapag midlifer ka na or nasa middle age ka na, magmi-midlife crisis ka kasi for all you know, baka hindi ka naman talaga meant to experience midlife crisis pero dahil ini-expect mo nagka midlife crisis katuloy, di ba? Oo, so hindi ito nangyayari sa lahat. But, pero ano ba yung essence ng midlife crisis? This is a feeling of a midlifer where they feel that they are not yet ready to be old. Nare-realize nila na yung buhay nila maikli na lang. Nare-realize nila na matanda na pala sila, pero ang problema nasa anong crisis doon, hindi pa sila handa tanggapin yung idea na matanda na sila. Or konti na lang yung nalalabi sa buhay nila. Siguro, let me use an analogy. Parang ganito. Imagine na sa roller coaster ka, di ba? Usually, ang roller coaster, bago siya mag-descent, bago siya bumaba, aakyat muna yan. Most people, habang umaakit yung roller coaster, they are excited. Di ba? They cannot wait to get to the top to experience the rush of excitement ng pababa. Di ba? So, a lot of people, habang pataas yan, excited sila, pero, This is a very common phenomenon among roller coaster riders, no? Kapag dating mo doon sa peak, nakita mo yung babagsakan mo, yung yung tarik ng babagsakan ng coaster. All of a sudden you realize na hindi ka kapala, hindi ka pa ready na mag-descend, 'di ba? Parang gusto mo ulit umatras yung roller coaster kasi sa sa taas pala niyan eh ayaw mo nang ituloy. Pero wala ka nang magawa because the coaster will still descend anyway, 'di ba? Ganun din sa midlife crisis, no? Maraming mga bata, adolescents, young ad- adult adulthood, no? Uh, Excited silang tumanda. Oo, kasi daw pag matanda na, eh, ang buhay nila, relax na lang. Wala na silang masyadong responsibility. You know? pa- around the world, around the world na lang sila. Pero, nung nandoon na sila at nakita nila yung buhay nila ay maikli na lang, all of a sudden, they are not yet ready. Parang, ayaw pa nilang mag-forward yung buhay nila na maikli na lamang. Maliwanag. So, When they realize that, that they are already aging and they are not yet ready to get old, dyan na ngayon nagmumula yung midlife crisis. And a lot of these people who undergo midlife crisis, ang coping nila dyan is distraction. Dinidistract nila yung sarili nila to convince them that they are still young. Meron silang mga ginagawang mga practices or behaviors na magpapatunay sa mga sarili nila na hindi pa sila matanda. Like for example, All of a sudden, merong mga nagbi-midlife crisis, meron silang interest in youth activities or hobbies. 
Yung all of a sudden, parang nag-iiba sila ng get up, nag-iiba sila ng damit. Meron silang mga binibiling mga bagay na usually ang, binibili, ang bumibili lang noon mga bata. Like ito, yung nasa slide ko. ba diba? Kapag nasa opisina ka, dapat briefcase yan. ba diba? That's a sign of maturity, that's a sign of seniority. Pero dahil nag midlife crisis siya, gusto niyang ma- maramdaman sa sarili niya na bata pa siya, pumasok siya sa opisina ng nakabackpack. Right? Or, eto matindi to, no, minsan, it can affect marriages. Karamihan ng mga nagmi-midlife crisis, they want to feel young, they want to convince themselves na nakakasabay pa sila sa mga bata, nag-change sila ng partner. Iniiwan nila yung asawa nila for a younger one. Kasi kapag nakahanap sila ng younger partner, they also feel young. They are convincing themselves that they are still capable to function kapag yung partner nila is younger than them. ba diba? Kaya ako marami na akong mga stories na narinig, no? Na after many years of marriage, yung lalaki biglang nag-midlife crisis, pinalitan niya bigla yung asawa niya for a younger girl, no? Ang explanation ng behavior na yon yun na nga, yung lalaki kasi, eh, nag-midlife crisis na hindi na-handle ng maayos. Oo, good thing, meron naman mga pwedeng gawin dito, Uh, para hindi hindi maranasan yung midlife crisis, we will talk about that as we go along. Pero ito, basahin ko lang yung quote na sinabi ni Mateo Sol, very interesting. Most people who experience midlife crisis have spent their entire lives raising a family or working in a career. They haven't had the time or capacity to ask important questions in life. Eventually, something triggers the question, is this all that there is? Is this all that there is? Diyan nang gagaling yung midlife crisis, no? Yung biglang nagtanong ka na, ito na lang ba talaga yung meaning ng buhay ko? Ito na lang ba talaga yung purpose ng buhay ko? Magtrabaho, mag-alaga sa mga anak ko, mag-alaga sa mga parents ko? Ito na lang ba talaga ako? Am I just sharing myself to other people? You no? Know? Wala na ba talaga akong iba pang dapat gawin? Yung mga gusto ko na gawin? kailan ko ba magagawa? When a person realizes that, usually dyan, dyan nag spark yung midlife crisis. So, how do you deal with this? Ano yung mga pwede mong gawin para hindi mo ma-realize yung, yung ganyan? Para hindi ka magdaan sa midlife crisis? We will talk about that later. Okay? Tulad nga na sinasabi ko kanina, another very hard challenge na kinakaharap ng mga midlifers is when they are put in a sandwich generation. Ibig sabihin yan, eh, yung oras nila na hahate between them taking care of their own family and taking care of their aging parents. No, Mahirap talaga na experience yan. May mga sarili kang problema sa pamilya mo, matigas ang ulo ng anak mo, you know, 3 a.m. na umuuwi, nagbabagsak-bagsak siya sa school, yung anak mong babae, nag-boyfriend na, na hindi mo alam. ba diba, all of these things, pinong problema mo. And then, on the side, yung mami mo, kinakailangan mong samahan mag-dialysis, yung daddy mo, kinakailangan mo samahan mag-physical therapy, kinakailangan mo sila dalawin, linggo-linggo, kasi nadidepress sila, wala silang makasama. So, natutorn ka ngayon. You know, lahat ng oras mo, lahat ng lakas mo, are torn, between your own family and your aging parents. In fact, dito rin, no, nakaka-contribute din ito sa midlife crisis. Eh. Di ba? Parang feeling mo, wala ka ng panahon sa sarili mo, tapos konti na lang yung oras mo sa mundo, di ba? So, nag spark din yan ng midlife crisis. So, again, this is a very important challenge that people should expect when they reach midlife. Kinakailangan marami ka talagang mga... Uh, emotional resources or even financial resources para magampanan mo yung dalawang roles mo between your own family and your aging parents. So, in a way, meron ding advantage yung mga uh, midlifers na uh, wala ng parents by that time. No? O yung yung maagang nawala yung parents nila, hindi sila mapupunta sa, sa sandwich generation. Now, we have to listen to Eric Erickson tungkol sa midlife. ba diba? sabi ni Eric Erickson, yung mga tao na nasa middle age, they undergo that uh, that stage in life, generativity versus stagnation. Basically, ang sinasabi lang ni Eric Erickson dito is, 
if you are a midlifer, one of the most important needs na dapat mong ibigay sa sarili mo is generativity. Meron kang need to contribute or to guide or to give back something to the younger generation. So all of a sudden, yung spirito mo during this time, midlifer ka na, meron na siyang pangangailangan na makakontribute sa younger generation. Again, it's a need. Kapag hindi mo na-satisfy yung yung need na yan, feeling mo wala kang silbe, feeling mo wala kang makontribute sa younger generation, sabi ni Erickson, mapupunta ka doon sa stagnation, sa stagnation part. And that is not good for your well-being, you know? Magiging prone ka sa depression or even, again, midlife crisis. So, if you want to have a healthy midlife, kinakailangan mapunta ka doon sa generativity side. Maiparamdam mo sa sarili mo that you are capable of contributing something to the younger generation. Ito yung pagkakaiba ng young adulthood. Yung young adulthood kasi, yung spirit ng tao during that period, wala pang ganung drive eh. Young adulthood is all about accumulating. It's all about getting things for the self. Pero kapag midlife ka na, middle ager ka na, iba na, no? nagiging baliktad na. This time, you want to contribute something to the younger generation. That's why a lot of people during this time, yung mga midlifer, no? uh, they enter into fields or they, they, yeah, they enter into fields where na... na tutulungan sila na maibigay yung generativity needs nila. Like for example, la- dati kang athlete, basketball player ka. Dahil nag-retire ka na, hindi na kaya ng katawan mo, gusto mo naman makakontribute sa younger generation, nagiging coach ka ngayon ng basketball. You are now imparting knowledge, you are now sharing knowledge na natutunan mo when you were still an athlete doon sa mga younger athlete. So you enter into coaching. Karamihan ng mga midlifers, meron silang drive na maging teachers. In fact, in Lasal or even in St. Benil, marami mga teachers jan. Hindi naman talaga nila kailangan yung pagiging teacher. No? Hindi nila bread and butter yung pagiging teacher. They can survive without teaching the university. Oh, so, marami nagtatanong, eh, sir, ma'am, eh, bakit pa po kayo nagtuturo? Bakit pa po kayo nagtitiis sa mga esudyanteng matitigas ang ulo? Sa mga esudyanteng maiingay, ini-stress lang kayo niyan. Eh, meron naman kayong stable na company. Ang sagot nila, kasi it satisfied their drives to contribute to the younger generation. Gusto nilang hulmahin. Gusto nila makakontribute doon sa mga future na mga bata na papasok sa human society. Oo, kaya marami mga teachers talaga eh, nagtuturo lang para masatisfy nila yung kanilang generativity needs. And of course, the best way to express generativity is by being a parent. Diba? Yung contribution mo, yung mga knowledge na alam mo, pinapasa mo yan sa iyong mga anak. Okay? So, yan yung ibig sabihin ng generativity. Now, ang tanong, bakit ba nagkakaroon ng generativity during during this time? Sabi ni Eric Erickson, because we would like to leave a legacy. Okay? Meron tayong need to leave our legacy. Gusto natin yung kahit wala na tayo, people will still remember us for something that we have given them while we were still here. Kung baga parang gumagawa tayo ng certain level of immortality na kahit wala na tayo, gusto natin maaalala pa rin tayo ng mga tao through the contribution that we have given them. Diba? Kung, kung i-coconnect mo yan sa sinasabi ni Maslow, yan yung esteem needs. Your desire to be accepted or to be valued by others. To be valued by others through your contribution. Kaya, konektadong-konektado yung sinasabi ni Erickson tsaka ni Maslow on generativity. Yung esteem needs na yan. Madalas talaga, nararamdaman mo yung need na yan when you reach midlife. Okay? And you know, yung, yung sinasabi ni Maslow tsaka ni Erickson, pwede mo na naman i-connect yan sa sinasabi ng Bible. Because the human spirit is designed to contribute. Diba? Yes, we want to be recognized, we want to be valued by others, pero yung paraan para makuha natin yung value na yan, yung paraan para makuha natin yung acceptance na yan comes from contribution.
And the Bible repeatedly teaches us that it is very important for us sa buhay na ito before we leave this this world to contribute something to the world. Diba? Paulit-ulit tinuro yan, for example, in the parable of the talents. Diba? Kung ikukumpara mo yung third servant doon sa first and second servant, anong pinagkaiba ng third servant? Bakit nagalit sa kanya yung master niya? Kasi siya lang yung walang contribution. Diba? Yung dalawang servant na nauna sa kanya, napalago yung talents na binigay ng master sa kanila. But for the third servant, yung talent na binigay sa kanya, tinago lang niya. Pagbalik ng master niya, wala, hindi niya napalago yung talent na yon nagalit tuloy sa kanya yung master. That is a very strong illustration that the Bible is teaching us to be productive, to contribute something to make other people better. And in the book of Romans, Chapter 12, verse 6 to 8, anong sinasabi dyan? Lahat daw ng tao merong gift. ba? Diba? Merong binigay ang Diyos na gift sa ating mga tao and ang dapat natin gawin sa mga gift na yan is to use them. ba? Diba? Your gifts must be used. In what way? To contribute something to the younger generation. So, yung sinasabi ni Maslow, yung sinasabi ni Eric Erickson about legacy, contribution, it's also being reflected biblically. Okay? And one of the most important activities na ginagawa during midlife is yung tinatawag nating midlife review. Karamihan ng mga tao na nagmi-midlife review, sinasagot nila yung mga existential questions tulad ng nakikita nyo sa slide. Am I in the right track? Tama pa ba yung ginagawa ko? No? What else should I do? Ano ba yung mga bagay na namiss ko, yung mga hindi ko nagawa, na gusto kong gawin? Ito ba talaga yung gusto kong gawin for the rest of my life? Kasi... Yung buhay ko sa mundo, sandali na lang. After my midlife, I become an old person. Is this what I really want? Itutuloy ko ba yung pagiging teacher ko? Itutuloy ko pa ba itong pagiging businessman ko? Yung pagiging lawyer ko? Huh? Masaya pa ba ako sa ginagawa ko? Because again, my life is being cut short every day. Do I want to continue doing these things? So, yung mga sagot nila sa mga tanong na yan, yan yung nagiging basihan ng mga adjustments na ginagawa nila or revisions in what they do with their life. ba? Diba? So, sasagutin nila yung mga tanong na yan, tapos yung mga sagot nila sa tanong na yan, yun yung nagiging basihan kung bakit sila nagkakaroon ng mga sudden decision changes. Like for example, meron akong kakilala, no? Ang tagal-tagal na niyang lawyer. Ang tagal-tagal na niyang lawyer, mga ano na siya, he's been practicing uh, law for 25 years. Tapos biglang nag-midlife review siya. Na-realize niya na yung pagiging lawyer niya, eh hindi naman pala niya talaga gusto yun. You know, na-realize niya na all this time, naging lawyer lang siya kasi in the first place, yan yung ini-expect na trabaho ng mga magulang niya sa kanya because they are a family of lawyers. But deep inside, hindi talaga paglo-lawyer yung, nasa, yung passion niya. No? He wants to be in the field of music. Gusto niya mag-compose ng kanta, gusto niya gumawa ng mga jingle, yan yung gusto niya. So, ang nangyari nung nag-midlife review siya, ang ginawa niya, biglang out of nowhere, all of a sudden, nag-retire siya as a lawyer. At mahirap gawin yon during that time kasi talagang boom na boom yung kanyang uh, law practice. Ang dami niya mga kliyente. Pero sabi niya, tumatanda na ako. No? Baka isang araw, eh, mawala na lang ako, hindi ko nagawa yung gusto ko. So, ang ginawa niya, nag-decide siya, iniwan niya yung paglo-lawyer niya, and then, nag-set up siya ng music studio sa bahay niya. And that's what he did until the day that he got old. Diba? Ganyan yung mga drastic na minsan ginagawa ng mga midlifers dahil yun sa kanilang pagmi-midlife review. Kaya kapag may kakilala kayong ganun, yung biglang midlifer siya, tapos biglang meron siyang decision na ginawa na parang sa paningin mo drastic, eh hindi siya drastic. Most of the time, nag-midlife review yan. Na-realize niya yung shortness of life. Kaya na-realize niya na it's about time to do the things that I really want to do. In fact, itong midlife review na ito, tsaka yung sudden change of behaviors, no, uh, pwede mo rin to i-connect sa sexuality. Meron naman akong kakilala, all throughout, alam niya na he's gay. 
Pero dahil sa pressure ng parents, sa pressure ng society, di ba? He pretended to be straight. Tinago niya na, na gay siya. So, ganun din. Ginawa niya yung mga bagay na ginagawa ng mga straight. No? Yung sport niya, pang straight, uh, nag-asawa siya, at meron siyang tatlong anak. You know? Pero nung nag-midlife review siya isang araw, sabi niya, bakit ba hindi ko na lang ipakita yung totoong ako? No? To be honest, hindi raw siya kasi happy sa pagiging straight kasi hindi daw siya yon. So, ang ginawa niya, after niya mag-midlife review, nag- nag-decide siya na to be out of the closet. Nagtapat siya sa asawa niya, nagtapat siya sa mga anak niya, and then he lived a life that he wanted to live. Talagang grabe yung, yung pagbabago sa kanya, no? Binago niya yung lifestyle niya, yung lifestyle na gusto niya, na ibang-iba doon sa lifestyle that he was practicing before he was out. Ganyan. Kahit sa sexuality, minsan, eh, gumagawa yung decision yung mga tao out of their midlife review. So, it's very important that people should really undergo this midlife review. Okay? So, what are some of the most important lessons that we can learn from uh, middle age? Number one, sana na-realize nyo that it is very important for you to nurture your physical health even at younger stages. Kasi karamihan ng mga tao, meron silang maling paniniwala na dapat healthy habit na sila pagdating nila ng 40s, di ba? Uy, 40 na ako, kinakailangan. Watchful na ako sa mga pagkain ko. Dapat itigil ko na yung mga bisyo ko. Actually, that's already late. Oo. Kinakailangan yung, kung gusto mong maging healthy ang midlife mo, kinakailangan healthy yung young adulthood mo. Kung gusto mo healthy yung young adulthood mo, dapat healthy rin yung adolescence mo. Kung gusto mo naman healthy yung adolescence mo, dapat healthy rin yung childhood mo. You see? Cumulative yan eh. So, yung pag-develop ng healthy habits should start young. At sino ba itong mga taong ito na kinakailangan mag-develop ng healthy habits? Of course, unang-unay sarili. Ikaw mismo meron kang disiplina to develop healthy habits. Pangalawa, lalong-lalo na during early years, yung mga magulang. Kaya yung mga magulang, isa sa mga responsibilities nyo is to really make sure that your kids are developing healthy habits. Yung i-develop mo sa kanila yung disiplina sa pagkain, disiplina sa exercise, yung disiplina sa pagtulog, yung disiplina sa paghandle ng stress, kinakailangan tinuturo yan at such a young age para yung magiging good effects niyan will be cumulative. Diba? Yung mga good effects niyan, eh, nadadala nila yan habang sila ay tumatanda. So, kapag healthy yung young adulthood years mo because of your healthy habits, most likely, magiging healthy rin yung midlife mo. Okay, so yung mga nakikinig sa akin ngayon na wala pa naman sa midlife, pero gusto mo na maging healthy yung midlife mo, you start healthy habits right now, regardless kung nasa ang stage ka ng buhay. Number two, don't waste your experiences, di ba? Sinabi nga natin kanina, isang bagay na magandang nangyayari during midlife, lumalakas o tumataas yung wisdom mo. Tumataas yung creativity ng tao. But wisdom and creativity, they have a price. Hindi yan basa-basa na lang na lumalabas. So, meron yang meron yang cost, meron yang price. And that is experiences. Kaya, one lesson that we can learn here is, huwag natin sasayangin yung mga experiences na nararanasan natin as we grow older. Every time that we experience something, sana tanungin natin yung pinaka tanong, what lesson can I learn from this experience? Maging reflective tayo. Kasi may mga tao, they just possibly let the experience pass. Di ba? Meron silang naranasan na bagay. Meron silang naranasan problema. Tapos, na-solve, na- na-solve naman on its own. Tapos, palilipasin na lang nila. Hindi dapat ganun. When there is an experience, when there is a problem you encounter, and then, natapos yung problema mo, dapat magre-reflect ka. Bakit ba nangyari yung problema in the first place? Ano yung tama kung ginawa doon sa problema? Ano yung mali kong ginawa kaya nagka-problema in the first place? Ipoproseso dapat natin yung mga experiences that we have learned. Kukunin natin yung lesson na, na, na pwede nating matutunan from a certain experience. Kaya ako, I highly recommend people to write 
diaries. Yan ang maganda sa diaries eh. Kasi kapag nagda-diary ka, nafo-force mo yung sarili mo to process events in your life. Na natatrain mo yung sarili mo na tignan yung mga magagandang bagay na pwede mong matutunan from your experiences. Di ba? So you can only imagine kung ang dami mong na-experience. Tapos lahat yun, kinuha mo yung mga magagandang lessons. Di ba? It adds a lot of wisdom to your spirit na pwede mong magamit later on as what? As an application to yourself. Ibig sabihin, yung mga lessons na natutunan mo, pwede mong i-apply sa sarili mo. Okay? Or, pwede mong ituro sa ibang tao yung mga natutunan mo sa mga experiences mo. O, pwede mo yung magamit for achieving generativity. Ituro mo ngayon yan sa mga mas bata sa'yo. Okay? So, one book that I encourage you to read about this is yung sinulat ni John Maxwell, Sometimes You Win, Sometimes You Learn. Ang ganda niyan. It will teach you how to process experiences that you have and then identify the important learnings that will improve the quality of your life. Magandang librong basahin yan. And number three, Always go back to your purpose. Pinag-usapan natin kanina yung, kanina yung midlife crisis. Paano ba maiiwasan yung midlife crisis? Remember, karamihan ng mga taong nagmi-midlife crisis, ang nagiging question nila, is all is this all that there is? Karamihan ng mga taong may ganyang tanong, is this all that there is? Let me tell you, hindi nila alam yung kanilang purpose sa buhay. Kasi in the first place, kung alam mo yung purpose sa buhay mo, kung alam mo yung calling mo, alam mo yung pinapagawa sa iyo ng Diyos, hindi mo, ma- hindi mo na itatanong yan eh. Because you know the answer. Is this all that there is? The answer is no. ba diba? Yung mga bagay na marami mong ginagawa, guess what? Nasa side lang dapat yun eh. Kasi meron kang isang bagay na dapat yun talaga yung focus mo. As long as you are living. And yun yung tinatawag nating calling mo. Yun yung tinatawag mong purpose mo. So one way to really prevent someone to experience midlife crisis is to work on the purpose. Dapat malinaw pala, malinaw na malinaw sa'yo kung bakit ka ba nandito sa mundo. Why is your spirit existing? Why are you why, why are you placed in a place where you are in? Bakit ka ba teacher? Bakit ka ba banker? Bakit ka ba attorney? Ano ba yung purpose mo? The more you understand what your purpose is, the lesser the chance you will experience midlife crisis. Pero ang tanong, paano ba na-identify yung purpose according to studies? When you work on your spirituality, when you work your relationship with God, when you meditate on the Word of God every day, most likely, makikita mo yung purpose mo. The maker of your spirit will reveal to you kung ano ba yung purpose na binigay niya sa'yo kung bakit ka ba niya ginawa. And that's a good thing. Kapag nasagot mo yung purpose mo, nasagot mo kung bakit ka ginawa, then everything comes into place. Lahat ng gagawin mo, lahat kung paano mo gamitin yung oras mo, kanino mo i-spend yung oras mo, lahat yan is anchored to your purpose. ba diba? Sabi nga, no? We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Lahat ng spirito na nabubuhay ngayon, inside our body, meron tayong purpose. We are, we are created for something. And if you want to have a healthy midlife, or a healthy life in general, One way to do that is to identify your purpose and live your purpose. The more you know your purpose, the more you live for that purpose, the better your psychological well-being becomes. Kahit nasa ang stage ka pa ng buhay, nagiging maganda ang psychological well-being mo because you are living your purpose. And, eto, bibigyan ko kayo ng clue, no? Uh, isang, isang clue lang naman dito, lahat tayo may purpose, tama? Oo. Pero, yung purpose natin na parang common sa lahat is it's something, that purpose is something that you need to contribute to others. Yan yung parang essence ng lahat ng purpose. Lahat ng purpose natin is, is to contribute something to others. Now, in what way? In what form? yung contribution natin sa ibang tao, dyan tayo nagkakaiba-iba. Yung iba, we contribute through teaching. Yung iba, we contribute financially. Yung iba, we contribute through encouragement. That's what you need to find out. Kaya nga sabi ko, you need to work on your spirituality. 
para mas maging malinaw sa iyo kung ano ba talaga yung purpose mo. Meditate on God's word, pray about it, talk to him, ask him to reveal kung ano ba talaga yung purpose mo sa buhay. Alright? And ito pa pala, no, before we end this video, another interesting thing about midlife crisis, alam nyo ba, yung midlife crisis is not all negative. Merong mga pag-aaral na nagpapakita that midlife crisis can awaken or can even spark spirituality. Ibig sabihin, yung midlife crisis pwede siyang maging tulay para magising yung spirituality mo, para maging ma-realize mo na kinakailangan mo pala na ayusin yung relationship mo with God for you to identify your purpose. Alright? So, hindi rin lagi masama yung midlife crisis. Pwede yan maging daan for a person to get to know God better. For a person to get to know his or her purpose in this life. So, yan yung magandang bagay, yung good side naman ng midlife crisis. So, you can prevent midlife crisis by identifying your purpose or you can also use your midlife crisis as a way to get to know your to, to, to get to know God better so that he will reveal to you what's your purpose in life okay so i hope marami kayong natutunan dito sa stage na ito sa sa midlife our next episode will talk more about uh, the last chapter of the human life which is old age Thank you for listening and God bless.